The Lyrid meteor shower peaks and we kick off galaxy season by exploring objects that are millions of light years away. Let's take a look at what you can go out to see in the night sky for April of 2025. I'm Michael Martin and this is Late Night Astronomy. Let's begin April with a major meteor shower. As the remnants of comet G1 Thatcher move through our upper atmosphere around this time every year, creating streaks of light that we all love to go out and see. This year, the Lyrids will peak on the night of April 21st, going into the early morning of April 22nd. To see them, go outside around 11 p.m. on the night of the 21st and look towards the northeast. There you'll find one of the brightest stars in the night sky, Vega, which makes up part of the constellation Lyra. Around that part of the sky is where these meteors will appear to come from. As the night turns to morning, Lyra will rise higher, leading to better views for those of you willing to stay up late or get up early. And thankfully, the moon is pretty much out of the way this year as well. The best views will be from the Northern Hemisphere, but my friends in the South will still see some meteors as well, but at a lower rate. Regardless of where you live, get away from light pollution, get comfortable, and give yourself at least an hour to enjoy the show as meteors from the Lyrid streak across the sky at a rate of roughly 10 to 20 per hour. For the past six months, I've been studying the surface of the moon in the way I never have before by comparing craters and land features to try to estimate their age based off of the evolution of the lunar surface. This is one of many incredible programs that the Astronomical League puts out, and I would encourage you to check out their website to see what programs they have for whatever you might be looking to study in the night sky. April starts off with a first quarter moon on the 4th, full moon on the 12th, last quarter moon on the 20th, and a new moon on April 27th. The Moon makes several close passes to some planets this month, starting with Jupiter April 2nd, Mars April 5th, Venus, Saturn, Neptune, and Mercury on April 25th, and Jupiter again on April 30th. After several months of the planets dominating the night sky, we start to shuffle up their placement just a little bit this spring, with some of them being viewed in the early evening and some in the early morning. Your best bet to view a planet this month is going to be Jupiter right after sunset. Track its Galilean moons with a pair of binoculars and turn your telescope to it to then study the cloud belts as they move across its surface from hour to hour and night to night. By the end of April and early May, it will be getting close to the horizon making high magnification views more difficult. So take advantage of the time we still have with the king of the planets in the evening sky this April. Traveling through the constellation Gemini, pretty much straight up in the night sky is our friendly red neighbor Mars. Even though it's smaller in appearance every night as we continue to move away from each other, you can still make out some land features and possibly even a polar ice cap at high magnifications on clear and steady nights early this spring. Uranus is lower to the horizon than Jupiter, and while not an impossible target this month, its low latitude will make it a very difficult target to get good views of. Switching to the early morning sky, you have what could possibly be referred to as a mini planetary parade around the morning of April 15th with Venus, Saturn, Mercury, and Neptune all hanging out close to each other in the east, with the best views being about 45 to 30 minutes before sunrise. Of these targets, Neptune is going to be a binocular or telescope target, but the other three should be visible to the naked eye. If you're able to get out to see this close alignment of the planets or anything else in the night sky this month, please share what you're able to see with us in the comment section below. With no major comets this April, let's move on to our main event of the month, the kickoff of galaxy season. Out of all the galaxies that we could look at, there are two that are my personal favorite, and they're also one of the first galaxies I ever saw about 20 years ago when I was getting back into this hobby. M81 and M82 Bode's Nebula are at a great placement right now, and with a pair of binoculars, but especially a telescope, you can see some incredible views of them, even under a decent amount of light pollution. To find them this month, let's go outside on a clear moonless night about an hour and a half after sunset 
and face towards the north. Look up until you come across Ursa Minor, the Little Dipper, and Ursa Major, the Big Dipper. Let's take out a pair of 10 by 50 binoculars and start by finding the star Dube. We're looking at about a six and a half degree field of view and we'll slowly move our way over until we find two faint blurry objects. I can make these two galaxies out with binoculars under a Bortle 5 sky in my backyard, but my best views always come from a telescope. Let's move up to around 50 times magnification using a 30 millimeter eyepiece in my 12 inch Dobsonian telescope. I find this view of the night sky giving just under a 1.5 degree field of view of space to be a near perfect frame of these two objects in the eyepiece of my telescope at the same time. Compare and contrast their shape and structure as you're looking at a spiral galaxy and starburst irregular galaxy that are roughly 12 million light years away from Earth. After enjoying both of them in the same view, I like to move in closer for greater contrast and study of them individually. For that, I'll switch to a 14 millimeter eyepiece giving me around 107 times magnification and a field of view of around 0.67 degrees. For the Cigar Galaxy, I like to push it even higher when I can, up to 150 times magnification using a 10 millimeter eyepiece. I was speaking with another amateur astronomer recently after a club meeting, and she referred to M81 and M82 as a galaxy picnic because of their resemblance to a hot dog and a hamburger. And I think I'm just gonna keep running with that, particularly for the spring and summer months when I'm observing it. If you're interested to see more about what she's doing in amateur astronomy, you can follow her over on Instagram at the Astro Ranger. Galaxy season is upon us, and next month we will begin a deep dive into a part of space that I'll be spending a lot of time with over the next few months as I begin working through the Herschel 400 list of deep sky objects, the Virgo Cluster, and its wealth of faint, fuzzy galaxies. Those are just some of the most incredible things that you can see in the night sky for the month of April. If you've enjoyed this video, please like it and consider subscribing to this channel to join our growing community. But most importantly, let us know what you're getting out to see an image in the comment section below. Thank you all so much for your continued support and clear skies from Late Night Astronomy.